In today's video, we're going to talk about errorless learning and how it is used as an implicit technique in motor learning when working with children. The definition of errorless learning is learning facilitated by constraining the learning environment so that very few errors occur. We'd like to ask ourselves, is motor learning improved but making less mistakes? But isn't making mistakes by trial and error learning a part of motor learning? Well, it's true that trial and error is a technique everyone uses to learn, but it stimulates a more explicit learning style. So what's the difference here? Imagine you're a professional tennis player playing the finals of a tournament. You're playing the second serve and if you score this point, you win the match. This needs to go well. So, before hitting the decisive serve, you remember typical mistakes you used to make. Before I hit the ball, my arm should be in a 45 degree angle and then at the last moment I should pronate my wrist. Okay, focus. The moment comes and perhaps I sort of overthought it. If you make a mistake, there's a good possibility you're thinking out loud what went wrong and how you should improve next time. In fact, you're using hypothesis testing strategy. In time, the explicit thought of how to improve your mistake will be stored in your long-term memory. If someone asks you why you failed, you can tell them step by step what went wrong. That way, you explicitly build knowledge of the technique. Later, if you're performing under pressure, you can use the available explicit knowledge from your long-term memory. Using this knowledge will make your performance more conscious and therefore less spontaneous. This reinvestment of knowledge disrupts the performance and will result in a less effective and less efficient movement. This effect is called choking under pressure. Errorless learning is used as a technique to minimize the amount of errors made when performing a task. The probability that you will use hypothesis testing strategies is decreased and thereby you're less likely to store explicit knowledge of step-by-step -step movement strategies in your long-term memory. I don't know how I'm doing this, but it works. To minimize the amount of errors during therapy, it is important that you build up exercises in a way that a child makes little to no errors. This means you should start relatively easy depending on the child's skill level and increase difficulty in baby steps. It can be challenging for a therapist to adapt exercises so that a child makes the fewest mistakes possible, but also progresses in their training. So, how can this be done in therapy? Raak! 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 Raak!